Today we're celebrating the liturgy for the sixth Sunday of Easter. If you would take a second, check your telephones and see if those are on silent or vibrate, something like that. Our celebrant this evening is Father Ray, our pastor, and he's being assisted by Deacon David. The song lyrics are on the pink sheet that Father referred to, the worship aids, and so you'll be able to find what you need there. Let's stand and sing our gathering song. Come, Christians, join to sing. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening. Amen. Wonderful blessing for us once again to gather around the altar together to celebrate the Eucharist. We're blessed to have several visitors with us. A special welcome to those visiting, especially uh, some friends of mine down from Huntsville to visit. And joy to have them here. This is uh, graduation weekend at the University of Montevallo, Montevallo and uh, we have some relatives of our graduates joining us this evening uh, for our liturgy. A uh, special welcome uh, to them. This is Mother's Day weekend, uh, tomorrow Mother's Day, and so we wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our congregation, and we pray for all mothers, especially the mothers of any of our parishioners, both those living and deceased uh, this weekend. We celebrate today the sixth Sunday of Easter, and our gospel comes to us from the 15th chapter of John's gospel. My favorite verses in scripture, Jesus speaking to you, Jesus speaking to me. As the Father loves me, so I love you. Live on in my love. Such is our call to live in the love of the Lord. Let us pause now to look within our hearts to see if we truly are living in God's love. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you love us as we are. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us always to live in your love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us forth that we might share that love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we, re what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up saying, get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, in truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon, upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This command, this I command you, love one another. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A mother received a, a card in the mail and uh, she opened the card, and the card was a Mother's Day card. And uh, the outside of the card was a beautiful picture of flowers. And then she opened the card, and there was a lovely uh, Hallmark text uh, inside the card. And then there was a handwritten part uh, there inside the card as well. And the handwritten part, it said, uh, Dearest Mom, uh, you are the greatest mother ever in the world. Wonderful thing to hear. Uh, she continued, Thank you so much for putting up with a messy, bratty, ungrateful child like my brother. <laughs> it was then signed, uh, love your favorite daughter. <laughs> Wonderful gift. This is uh, Mother's Day weekend, and so a special message of, of love and care to all of our mothers. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, we remember in a special way in our Mass today uh, the mothers of, of all our parishioners, all mothers everywhere, uh, whether they are living or deceased. Uh, special weekend, uh, Mother's Day weekend. We gather today uh, on, on the sixth Sunday uh, in ordinary time. Uh, I'm sorry, sixth Sunday in the Easter season. And that sixth Sunday in the Easter season, the Gospel comes to us from the 15th chapter of John's Gospel my favorite passage of Scripture, powerful message that Jesus offers to you and to me. Jesus says to his disciples, we are those disciples, Jesus is speaking to you, Jesus is speaking to me. Hear these words, not as my words that I'm offering you today. Hear these words directly from Jesus to you. This is what Jesus offers you. This is the message that Jesus gives you. This is what Jesus wants you to hear from him. Listen to the words of Jesus to you. As the Father loves me, so I love you. Live on in my love. You will live in my love if you keep the commandments, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and live in his love. All this I tell you, that my joy may be yours and that your joy may be complete. That's the message of Jesus to you. That's the message of Jesus to me. It's a message of living in his love. It's a message of sharing his joy. But how is it that we do that? How do we live in the love which Jesus offers to us? How do we live in Jesus' joy? There are many ways of describing it, many ways of approaching it. One way is to approach it from the perspective of friendship, that we live in friendship with Jesus, that Jesus is our friend, and we treat Jesus in the way that we would treat a special friend, as Jesus always treats us as he would treat a special friend to live in that friendship with Jesus. There's a famous children's hymn that I'm sure all of you have heard, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. That's the message of today's gospel. What a friend we have in Jesus, that Jesus seeks to be friends with you, that Jesus invites you to be friends with him. What does that entail? If you want to be a friend of Jesus, how do you live if you want to have that friendship with the Lord. Again, many ways to describe it, many possible ways to look at it. Three that I would offer to you, three understandings of friendship in terms of our friendship with the Lord. The first, friendship as remembrance. The second, friendship as love. The third, friendship as sacrament. The first, friendship as remembrance. Indeed, to remember one's friends, such a, an important thing. I, I always try to remember names. Uh, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes not as successful. Uh, with my loved ones, I always try to remember birthdays uh, and to send birthday cards to my loved ones uh, on their birthday. Uh, a way of offering remembrance. The challenge in terms of friendship is a challenge of remembrance. It's a challenge of remembering special times together. It's a time, a, a, uh, an experience of remembering the feelings of love and care that are offered. That that is a very important part of friendship, a part of friendship of remembering. 
My friend uh, Michael Guidry uh, would speak of friendship in this way, uh, as a wonderful way of talking about it. Uh, what is friendship? Uh, who is a friend? A friend is someone who knows the song in your heart and hums it to you when you've forgotten. A wonderful way of looking at friendship, to know the song of one's friend's heart. That's the call of the gospel. That's the call of Jesus, to live in that friendship, to live in that friendship with Jesus. And one element of that friendship with Jesus is the element of remembrance, the element of remembering. We gather here for the Eucharist. We do this in remembrance of Jesus. Indeed, everything in our life should be done in remembrance of Jesus. Do this in memory of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Such we do here as we gather for Eucharist. Such we are called to do each moment of our lives. If we wish to live in friendship with Jesus, one element of that is remembrance. First, friendship as remembrance. Second, friendship as love. Indeed, that's a very special dimension of friendship, to have a love for one's friends. One of the struggles we have in English is the poverty of our words for love. Uh, indeed, the word love is used for so many different things, has so many different dimensions to it. Uh, the Greek language has four different words for love, four words that speak to the different realities of love. The first would be storge. Uh, storge is love for something, uh, and so I could say, I, I love football, or I love ice cream. And, and that's true, I, I do. Uh, but from a perspective, uh, loving a thing, a, a very low level of love. Uh, a second level of love uh, from the Greek perspective is eros, uh, and that is a, a romantic love, a, a love for a spouse, a, a love for a sweetheart. That that would be a dimension of love. That special spousal love uh, would be a, an erotic love. Eros is a way of love. The third is philia, uh, and philia would be a, a love for a buddy, a love for a friend, uh, a love that would have a relationship that many would call a brotherly love or a sisterly love. And, and so we have in our country Philadelphia, which is the city of brotherly love. And the fourth type of love is agape. It is a love that has no desire for itself, totally invested in the other. Agape is a totally self-giving love. We would talk of it today probably as an unconditional love. It is with that love that Jesus loves you. It is with that love that Jesus loves me. It is with that love that God loves us always. Our second reading today uh, in the letter of John, John will tell us uh, God is love, and that love that God is is an agapic love. God is love in the sense of agape, an unconditional love, a love that seeks not for itself, a love that is only concerned about the other. That is an opportunity of friendship. That is a reality of friendship. The second, to have friendship with Jesus, that friendship is an element of love. The third, to have friendship with Jesus, for me, is a sacrament. And you would say, well, well Father Ray, I, I've studied the catechism. I know that there are seven sacraments, and it's not one of them. And you're absolutely correct. Sacrament with a capital S. But there's another way of seeing sacrament, that there are many things we call sacramentals, uh, that we can see sacrament with a small s in, in a different way. Uh, those are things that draw us to God. Those are things that express God's presence with us. Those were outward signs of an inner grace. Such would be a sacrament. Such friendship can be if it is a friendship that brings us closer to God, if it is a friendship that brings us more in relationship with Jesus. I wonder in terms of your friends, are you a source that bring them to Christ? And I wonder, are they people that bring you closer to Christ? If they are, they are sacraments. They are signs of God's love, signs of God's love that affect that presence of God's love. It is that experience of friendship, that experience of friendship that is a special way, a, a presence of God, a special way of making God present for us. The third, third, friendship as sacrament. And so it is that today I come to bring you good news, good news of the friendship of Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Good news of the message that Jesus offers to you and to me today. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Live on 
in my love. Let us now please stand. Let us together profess our faith. Our profession of faith is the Apostles' Creed, which you'll find on your song sheets. We pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, confident in this love that God offers to us, let us now bring to God our needs and the needs of all our world. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Stephen Rica, and all priests to continue to proclaim the message of the love of Christ to the world, with clarity and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of states and nations in our world to be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit in their decisions and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers to experience the profound joy and gratitude of being examples of life and of faith for their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Thomas Parish community, that our work and worship together may reflect the complete and unconditional love of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God to hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our parish book of intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, the men and women of the armed forces, and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the peace of Christ, may Laura Chavez receive the gift of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Most merciful and loving God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We beseech you to remove the coronavirus from our world. We ask you to bring reconciliation to our civil discord. We ask you to protect all human life from conception until natural death. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together where charity and love prevail. Where charity and love prevail, their God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love. By love are we thus bound. Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contend. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all in his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with this sacrificial offering, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by his cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the divine Savior command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our savior jesus christ Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Several announcements to share with you. Our thanks for your kindness in following our precautions with regard to the coronavirus. We only use papers uh, one-time use in the parish now, so any papers you do not want to bring home if you leave them on the seat of your pew. You may remain in church as long as you wish after Mass to pray, but we would ask that you not visit in the church or the gathering area, but go to the parking lot or to the courtyard to visit. St. Thomas is offering a new model for seating uh, in the church. Thanks to the progress against the pandemic, uh, St. Thomas offers seating in alternate pews in the church from the entrance to the middle aisle, and then uh, every pew from the middle aisle uh, to the end of the church. Our Knights of Columbus have a smoked meat sale for Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Pre-sales are available after Mass in the portico uh, to the parish hall. There will be a special rosary played in the church uh, tomorrow morning uh, after the 9 o'clock Mass uh, in honor of the Blessed Mother. And that's the Knights to come forward at this time for their gifts. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers, and the Knights of Columbus have a gift for all mothers. We would ask that you come forward in the usual Holy Communion lines to receive your gift. Stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. In honor of our Blessed Mother, we'll be singing Hail Holy Queen, which is on the back of your lyric sheet, and we're singing the verse marked 1 and 5. One in five. Oh, 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 oh. 